You're now listening to the Something Good Podcast Network. Please press any key to continue. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Don't touch it! Fucking hilarious, man. I love the Sopranos. Fucking I gotta rewatch that again. There's a bunch of episodes I remember watching it the first time through going like this is very early two thousand specific. <laughs> yeah, the cell phones and the cars and shit. Like just really Tony Wax to do with a big mouth Billy Bass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was funny. <laughs> Don't you bring this fucking shit in here. <laughs> <laughs> they just <laughs> it's just like da da ya da note for a note like hey, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> I love at the end of that episode too. <laughs> at the at the end of that episode he's fucking uh, like Polly's holding one. He's like, I'm gonna put it in the, I'm gonna give it to Tone as a, as a gift. And it's like, and him and Christopher are just laughing at it because yeah, it's singing like Mar- Marshall Tucker songs or something. And he's like, oh, he's gonna love it. And you're like, he's gonna kill both you motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everyone to this week's edition of the Couch Brotatoes. I'm Alex. Oi, it's Cap. Hey, Tone, I tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> and before we get started on this episode, I know we've kind of brought up a few times, but hey, we record these in batches, so we're just gonna keep talking about. It, but we are slowly coming to the end of our King of the Hill retrospective, and we've kind of discussed a few other shows we might want to do. But we want to throw this out to our Patreon and Discord members. If you guys have a show idea you want us to go through, comment either in the Patreon page or in Discord. We'll see it faster in the Discord. But either way, let us know what you want us to do because, again, we're we've been doing this for close to a year now yeah. Yeah. and so it's like we've been kind of doing it for our way for a year now so you know toss it to you guys what do you want us to do so. tell us the show though I can rip it apart <laughs> <laughs> re- deconstruct it <laughs> Chris reviews movies brutally <laughs> look at this fucking punk <laughs> Chris's brutal mute movie review oh, yeah. oh that could be a YouTube series oh I could do it with puppets <laughs> oh my god yeah <laughs> No, it'd just, it'd just be uh, you, me, and Alex's puppets. Yeah. Oh, like little Muppets? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, it would be just you as the real person, but Muppets of me and Cap, and you'd be talking for us. And oh, my like, God. Well, why do you think that, Chris? Well, I'm glad you asked that, Cap. <laughs> <laughs> well, fucking A. Well, hey, you, kids. If you open your mind and get the hand out of your fucking ass, I can tell you. <laughs> I won't. Oh my god! And make like really bad crude sock puppets. Yeah. <laughs> like just put one like a hat, uh, one for me, and just some eyes, and then put like slash hair on another one for Cap. Googly eyes and shit like that. Yes. <laughs> only only deal is they have to slowly get better every episode. <laughs> they have to have like new like just uh, just a little better uh-huh. every, until until we get to like the 80th episode where it's actual Muppets. <laughs> <laughs> Where we have afforded to actually purchase like Muppet quality. And we have a studio and everything. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be the one show that lifts us off. Yeah. <laughs> All we got to do is record. So when we do our one live version, Murder we got- Muppet movies. <laughs> <laughs> There's a movie that was like that that's on Netflix yeah. now. I can't think of what it's oh, called. Oh, The Habitat Murders. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I haven't watched that yet. I did not hear good things about it. It's fucking hilarious. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I didn't hear good things. There's good. a lot of people that don't like Melissa, Melissa McCarthy. I can give a shit, but yeah, I, I it, it's, it's fucking way. funny. Okay. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not against it. I, just, yeah. I did not. From people's comedy opinions, I uh, trusted. They were just like, wasn't good. I'm not. What, I, what I've been kind of uh, coining lately is I'm not an Adam Sandler comedy fan. It's a slapstick mm. disgusting comedy. Yeah, it was, it was Muppets jizzing and shit, yeah. so. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, the, yeah, that, for my personal taste, that, that could get a little old. But guys, it's Silly String. It's hilarious. Oh, yeah, it is fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of actually something hilarious, we're, if you see the title, you already know we're diving into King of the Hill Season 7. Still pretty solid season. Oh yeah, there's a still bunch of, solid. There's a bunch of gems in this. Because yeah. in the background, Cap has now finished the series. So yeah, I'm kind of uh, 
on the tail end of the whole series, uh, they start writing, you know, Family Guy sketch ideas for King of the Hill, and this yeah, season oh, still man. has its, uh, you know, core. Maybe at, more Simpsons style sketch. Yeah, yeah it's still, like, fa- still family oriented. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Where I, th- we, I see King of the Hill leading up to this point is still its own identity as far as a oh, family yeah. dynamic Absolutely. in a TV show. <laughs> yeah, and this very first one is Get Your Freak Off. In which Hank takes Bobby to his friend's music concert, but much to the dismay, uh, it winds up being that boy band that gets all sexual on them. And Hank I call it the fin- like, I call it the finger bang episode. Yeah, <laughs> because I, South Park did the exact same thing. Oh, right? yeah. No, I I like this one because uh, I a strong opener to the season, and it immediately reestablishes Hank's issues mm. with PDA and anything overtly yep. sexual and, and I like the but he liked the band at first didn't he he did because he thought they were good because the front I think like the front of the CD had them like in like suits and shit oh, yeah, look, these gentlemen look look like they're going to church yeah yeah, yeah. So, so Hank thought they were just a bunch of good Christian boys and he only listened to like 10 seconds of it at the little old it thing. Was, this is catchy, Bobby. Uh, the, he's like, it reminds me of the what the Four Tops or yeah. some shit like that. Some 60s doo-wop band. He's right. like, oh, it reminds me of that. And he like takes Bobby to the concert and like literally like a bar uh, into the bar later into the song than when he turned it off. It's like, boom, fireworks. And it's like fucking Backstreet Boys. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's the Not whole grinding. <laughs> <laughs> like a preteen's grinding. <laughs> hey, look, damn. And he's, I'm dancing. and he's looking at all the teenage girls around them when he's like wait a minute uh-huh. <laughs> no I, but I like this one because and near the end of it though Hank because isn't this the one where later on, oh isn't this the one where Bobby winds up going to that girl's house and it was the super progressive parents or yeah. am I or am I confusing the, the suicide two? hotline girl is that him I think I might Ooh. be confusing the two I think uh, the first uh, scenario is correct yeah. Oh, I, I wish I could remember because I'm trying to remember if this is the one where after that happens, uh, Hank meets up with. You know what? I think it might be. I think this is the one where after that, Hank meets up with the parents. And then they're just like, as, in so many words, pull the stick out of your ass, Hank. Right. And then invites Bobby over to the sleepover that winds up getting hijacked by that other guy team that was trying to push things too far yeah yeah is that it was yeah, that or am i confusing yeah, I the think, two I episodes think right. i think you're right and then at the end uh hank takes bobby and that chick to the old amish farm yeah and then, like he, bobby gives her that quick kiss on the cheek and he's mm. like hey none of that uh or and then he's and then they grab hands he's like ah, none of that either yep uh, i guess i guess that's fine yeah <laughs> and the fucking guy walks back heathens yeah. <laughs> dang a lot happens in this episode yeah like i said i might be confusing the two i think you're right okay because because looking at the wikipedia it doesn't say because the uh the b story is uh peggy nancy and men tried to decide who is the best looking out of hank dale boomhauer and con and bill that was just kind of like a little small bit yeah, yeah. I, think I forget they, who they, they, they i think they picked hank <gasps> oh it what actually that's right it was hank because uh, Hank swooped in and was being like big dick dad energy and saved the sleepover. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then that's when um, uh, uh, men and what's her head? Nancy. Nancy. We're just both like, you know, when Hank has to come down to it, Hank, Hank showed that silent dominance thing yep. that he's good at. You know that- why? Hank fucks. <laughs> <laughs> Hank is the alpha of that entire group. Oh, yeah. And, and he's the true alpha because he's not boastful about it. He's one of those silent alphas. Because he fucks. As, <laughs> as, as the ghetto boys would say, to bring it back to Mike Judge, real gangsta ass brothers don't flex nuts because gangsta ass brothers know they got them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and that is Hank. Yeah. <laughs> Wu Tang. <laughs> now, I thought this was a pretty good one, though. Yeah, that was a pretty solid episode. I liked it because it still showed uh, Bobby still having a bit of innocence that he wasn't willing to let go of. It's a good Hank episode, too, Mm -hmm. especially with the context of uh, all the the wives, you know, doing their (laughs) rankings. Well, and also because, you know, especially in this time period, let's see, this season came out in, quit scrolling like that. Uh, (laughs) This this season came out in uh, 2002 to 2003. So, you know, especially in this culture, you know, a and I'm not complaining about it, it's just what it was. A lot of overly sexual things were happening around that period. That of time. was the culture, yeah, you're exactly. right. Exactly. So 
it was also very common for preteens to immediately fall into that and just find it cool. So for a character like Bobby to all of a sudden get thrown in the closet with that yeah. chick and be expected to make out, and he's just like, where he's uh, the victim. Yeah, almost. Where actually, where both of them though were just kind of like, uh, no, which is, we which, just you know, we want to move slow. It, this but is, it is too kind fast. of weird that they're you know they get kind of. Uh, prudish about all this even though like a few seasons before you know con connie slept over with bobby mm-hmm. and then they had the uh the party yeah yeah, yeah. Connie's let's house. make out with tongues yeah and the, and the birthday party and the valentine's thing you know i think it may have been because it was so quick because bobby had just met that new girl yeah and, and I guess with Connie, he felt like he had kind of known her and, and had those personal hangout laugh moments to where maybe you felt comfortable enough for that. Yeah. Connie, I, Connie's, a best, like, Connie's a best friend. This girl just kind of was, it like, like you he were saying, somebody. maybe knew her for like a few weeks. Or, oh, no, it was someone he finally asked out from school. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah, so he just ba- basically just met her. So I can understand him being a little well, bit more. he got that Hank mm. swag, man. man. Right? <laughs> I mean, Con- when Bobby grows up. Bobby Fox. Oh, oh, oh God! What was it from the previous season? Uh, Yo, Sherry Stone Fox. Cole, what up? <laughs> He's got it when he wants to. He's gonna make him laugh and make him breakfast. Oh yep, yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, episode two: The Fat and the Furious, where Bill becomes a competitive eater. I just watched this not long ago. Yeah, yeah, it's so fucking. And then we got Kid Rock. Oh, Kid Rock and Pamela Anderson. Yeah, yeah she does. She's the. She's the. Uh, Oh, what is it? Uh, a hog cheerleader, hog. yeah. She's oh, yeah, a hog yeah, yeah. Hog. <laughs> Where, like, Kid Rocks is uh, coming up. It's going like, this is Come as American on, as it gets, man. <laughs> yeah, and Hank's, like, really pushing him, too. Like, Hank, Hank gets proud because it's an American sport, and he's mm-hmm. mad because the Japanese guys, man. Right. <laughs> but this is such a stupid fucking contest for, like, Amer- like an Amer- like people think it's, like, an American thing. Yeah. yeah. And I love that Khan gets involved because there's a, uh, a Laotian guy, Irrawaddy, mm. who who wins in the end. Yeah. And <laughs> the whole time they're talking to Bill and Khan just walks up. He's like, Irrawaddy is the best. He's like, he's the pride of Laos. And then at the end where Irrawaddy wins the big, the whole thing, he's like, he shows up shirtless. Yeah. With like a number on his thing, with on his stomach. And he's basically that guy at a football uh-huh. game. He's like, Irrawaddy, Irrawaddy, Irrawaddy. What the fuck? What the fuck? Suck that American. <laughs> And it feels like uh, this was actually the first, because I know what you were talking about, how it feels like as the seasons progressed, uh, Chris was saying that it felt like they were getting a little bit more bizarre with their storylines. Yeah. And it felt like the only, like, why was Chris Rock even there other than, I mean, Chris Rock, (laughs) Kid Rock. Kid Rock. Why was Kid Rock even there except for Kid Rock to be there? Yeah, so they kind of so, was, so yeah. they kind of played into that. Be like, is that Kid Rock? Holy cow, that's Kid Rock! Hey He's kids, a, it's Kid Rock. Yeah, kind <laughs> of like the Simpsons saying, "Hey, thanks Tony Hawk. Hey, did you see that was Tony Hawk? Hey, thanks Tony Hawk." Basically, kind of thing. yeah. They so don't do, they don't do that a whole lot with uh, celebrities, you know, playing themselves. No, nah. usually they go incognito unless it's like that uh, festival episode where I've, clearly you want a bunch yeah. of country music stars to yeah. get stars. Exactly. Other shows, other shows rarely do it, like Family Guy. Mm-hmm. Like they got James Wood playing James Woods. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but uh, but then like uh, Adam West playing the mayor. Yeah, uh, I love it. Fred Savage is a yes. family guy, and he plays himself, plays but he Fred also plays Savage. as Rush Limbaugh, George Bush, uh, Dick Cheney. He's like, because Fred Savage is the world's greatest actor. <laughs> 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 That's pretty amazing, though. Yeah, but yeah, I thought this one was uh, pretty That's good. A fun one. And it feels like this was the first time we really saw well, Dale. Dale steps up and tries. To, yeah, he, he's this is. In, in the overall arc of the show, this is about the fourth or fifth time Dale's like, stop fucking doing that. Yeah. I'm trying to help you, you fat fuck. Well, I was, <laughs> I was actually going to mention, it feels like the first time that he was pretty brutal to Bill. He is brutal. Mm-hmm. He is brutal because he has to be. Yeah. Because the whole thing was, you know, it, you're becoming you're becoming a greedy pig. Yeah. You know, granted, it's a contest. He's like, look, this is not for you anymore. You know they're going to laugh at you, mm-hmm. and you're going to take it hard. I think he was just looking out for his friend because he knows that Bill Bill's mentality can't take hits like Dale or Hank or yeah. even Boomhauer. Yeah, they can't take they can take criticism a certain way. Mm-hmm. He gets it 
it's almost debilitating. Takes yeah. it super personal. And Dale, Cause, Dale cause does Dale, it a couple more times, too. Yeah, because he does it with the... Um, uh, what do you call it? The, with the, the singing it was, group. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. It's like, mm-hmm. you like, look ridiculous. This is a tin-headed... What, ass? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is a tin-headed ass. So there's, a Clark, there's a Clark Griswold-style yeah. rant. Oh, my God, yeah, yeah. It really is. It's like, a, oh, wow. Yeah. That's a good pull. I like yeah. that. But, um, you know, the whole thing was, you know, Dale, Dale could eat bugs. Yeah. And then everybody's like, oh, man. He's like, and for a minute, I had him. Mm-hmm. And then he sees that one person like that's disgusting. Yeah, that one chick is. And that like, happened to Bill in the middle of the competition, and that that put a bullet in him. Yep. yep. He's like, he, he even asked Hank. He's like, Hank, can I please stop? Mm-hmm. Which is kind of fucked up, I think. Uh, and he's like, Yeah, yeah. America's good at a lot of everything. Is number one in everything else. I think it's okay to be number two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Normally, I hate Bill episodes, but when. Bill's taken down a peg and he finally like real like gets past his autism or whatever he has <laughs> and figures out what he did wrong. Those are good episodes. Well, that <laughs> comes out of fucking left field. I've never heard you <laughs> mention that in personal time on the show. Where did you pull that one from? I don't know. <laughs> Bill has What's autism. Something's wrong hey, with man, him. Cap man, you know what you know how Cap is? It's like a bunch of retards playing baseball, man. <laughs> Change the game. Hey, change the, the game, game man. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! And actually, uh, like, while we're kind of on the topic of that, all oh, the B lot was this was Peggy trying to hide it the whole time. Yes, yeah. I love that. He's like, "Hey, there's a hot dog." Yeah, because they did not. Want and she's Bobby like, no "Have way. you ever seen El Paso?" <laughs> <laughs> you mean to tell me there's a contest oh. for hot dog eating? This is where Peggy teaches him how to fish with his hands. Yeah, and it's weird as fuck. And then. Like at the end of the episode, they're they're fading out, and then it's fucking Bobby knee deep in a fucking stream, and he goes, "Hee and he pulls the fish out of the fucking water. Yeah, and it's like you taught him that, Peggy. Yeah, you taught him how to be a fucking man hunter, a <laughs> warrior. Yeah. yeah, that boy that can fucking yeah. live. <laughs> that boy can yeah. live if he li- if he gets dropped off oh, in Bobby, the woods. Bobby would be the most like doomsday prepped motherfucker. Oh yeah, because we already saw in the uh, did we see that. Uh, uh, on the podcast yet, the uh, boot camp episode. Uh, we oh, might, yeah. I think so. We might yeah. have already done that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cotton puts them there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, I know we've definitely seen it in person already. I didn't know if we talked about it on the show, but yeah, right there, he's mush. You know, yeah. he stayed in that fucking uh, hole for that long, and he didn't break down. So yeah, he, he's fucking ready. Bobby's tough, and he can make motherfuckers laugh. Yeah. But but I was thinking about this, and he could tear them apart, tell them which piece of meat they are. <laughs> <laughs> this part's the rib. <laughs> First, I get them laughing to get the muscles contracted and bullshit. <laughs> and then I cut them. <laughs> just breathe their movements. I was thinking about this, though. Just about, like, eating competitions in general. I don't like the ones where you have, like, an hour. And, like, you can eat as much, like, you know, eat as many hot dogs as you can, you know, in 30 minutes kind of shit. I think that's ridiculous. I think it would be more interesting. In mass. No. If you have, say, 10 hot dogs and it's... Who can eat them the fastest? Go. Oh, okay. Not quantity, but speed. Yeah, that's when you end up with choking. <laughs> yeah. But that's, I feel like, I like, I feel like that one would be a little bit more cool. I just don't like the whole gorging yourself mm. just to the point of, you know, like, who can eat more? It's no, like, like, that's uh, disgusting. They're, they're, but both like, dis- they're both disgusting. It's, it's, <laughs> you're, you're correct. You are correct. <laughs> like, but I just feel like it would be m- more interesting to watch someone fucking pound 10 hot dogs well, in fucking 30 seconds than it would be just for him to just keep going and going and going. I know this is off topic, but didn't we all watch Man vs. Food too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. When it was a thing. Oh, so you yeah. went to North Carolina and did the hot dog thing? I'm like, oh, really? That's your challenge? I know it. It's I'm just like, like, I could do that. I remember, uh, I remember in Knoxville. <laughs> like, I'm, not, I'm a big guy, but Jesus Christ, I could... I could eat that. Was, oh, well, here's the thing is uh, the penguin. Uh, they were on diners, drive-ins, and dives. Did they have a challenge? They had a challenge. What was it? Uh, it was called the uh, it was the penguin challenge. And Do it you was eat a, a penguin? That'd be awesome. Yes. <laughs> uh, no, no it, it was like fucking like, the thing was is I made it once or twice there. And it's like by the second or third time I made it, I was looking at it going, fuck, if I was hungry enough, I really could do it. The burger was like fucking 40, 50 bucks. And it was like, 
I want to say seven or eight patties with like buns in between each one and like cheese and all that shit and like all the fixings and like basically it had to be served, you know, laying down. You had yeah. a big skewer going through it, but it would have like pimento cheese on okay. it and, you know, and all this other and like onion rings and all this other crap. Very and, North Carolina. Oh, yeah. big time. And like I said, I'm looking at it kind of going like it, it would take a lot, but fuck in the right day, I could eat this. <laughs> and also the thing is, if you ate it uh, in one sitting, it was free and you got a t-shirt. Oh, shit. No one did it. Fuck, I would have done it. Like, seriously, people would leave it to mm. where the equivalent of a double burger was left. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sitting here going, like, bro, you've got, like, two patties and a bun left. Do it. Sack up for America. <laughs> You're about to save $40. Yeah. Hank Hill would be disappointed. Oh, no, it's like a steak that Bobby eats. I would yes. just ate that motherfucker, slammed a fucking glass on the ground. Another! Yeah. <laughs> but on that one, uh, one of my favorites from the season, I think, bad girls, bad girls, what you gonna do? Ted Powell's coming to town and oh, making some crack shit. cocaine. <laughs> or meth. Yeah, yeah. she was making meth. Ted pa- <clears throat> Voiced by Lucy Liu. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah, God damn, Lucy Liu. <laughs> Remember, y'all would reference uh, Ted Powell a lot before I actually like, sat down yeah. and finally watched okay, the Tid episode. Pal, yeah. <laughs> Ted Powell. No, I, Tid Powell's a bad bitch. I love this one because it was, if, if, uh, Con is the complete foil to Hank, then Tid Powell is the complete foil to Connie. Yeah. And that's what I really liked about it is just seeing the stark contrasts like that. Yeah. And it was also kind of, Cute may not be the right word, but humorous, uh, rather, to see Bobby fall for her so oh, hard. Yeah. And, the way, yeah. and the way he even worded it is like, it's Connie, but cooler. <laughs> oh, oh, when he found out she was from California, that was over. That oh, was yeah, it. that was it. It was like, oh. Bobby's just like, I feel funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Dave. <laughs> Bobby, Bobby, I think you have what's called an Asian fetish. <laughs> I mean, hell, yeah, because uh, as we, I, I think, discussed on one of the previous ones, when Hank got to meet his uh, half-brother, all of a sudden, Bobby finds a fucking girlfriend in he's Japan. Got that, he's got that finish like yep. uh, like his grandpa does. Yeah. All right. Skips a generation, I guess. Checks, mm. out, checks out men every now and then. <laughs> <Hell yeah. laughs> I'm all up in that rice paddy. <laughs> <laughs> men? Oh, there's only one man. <laughs> Fucking Khan fucks me a lot too in the show. I've never oh seen yeah, it. he's like we have Heineken or Beck, Becks. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> that's where those abs are coming from. Yeah. <laughs> but I dug this one because uh, keeping with kind of continuity, which they also kind of abandoned in the later seasons, just kind of going for more serialized, compact into one episode kind of storylines. Uh, Bobby and Connie aren't together on this anymore and they're kind of on the outs mainly because of Tid Powell but how still by the end because you know spoiler alert uh, Bobby gets wrapped into you know doing the accidentally making meth yeah, yeah in school in front of a cop candy yeah candy <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh we gonna make candy yeah yeah, yeah that's what we want to do Jack <laughs> yeah that's yeah. if they should have brought back the Jack part yeah. Yep. yeah Jack that's what I like I like the way you talk Jack <laughs> and, but Connie winds yeah. up saving the day by basically blowing that shit up with a potato cannon yeah and I thought that was pretty cool. And it's just like, prove it wasn't, and yo. Love, yeah, prove it wasn't, yo. That's what I love. And, and at the same time, I'm also sitting here going, I'm like, and then like hard cut to like Connie in the principal's office with that cop. And he's just like, I am a police officer. I'm not going to lie about you. You shot the fucking thing with a potato cannon. Discrimination. And he's like, fuck. <laughs> no, I like the hard cut to fucking Tid Powell in fucking Wyoming. Yeah, shoveling shit. Shoveling shit. <laughs> he's like, you fuck this up. You go back to grandma and Laos. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mom, I don't, want, I don't want to go back to Laos. You get out there then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You want to be a landlocked country in Southeast Asia? Sure. <laughs> Then probably the, one of the most deplorable Peggy episodes, Goodbye Normal Jeans. Yeah. Yep. This is the one where Peggy becomes jealous of Bobby when he starts taking home yeah. at class. Well, because he becomes like the fucking Martha Stewart well, it's overnight. Start, it's yeah, start. this was the cooking episode with the, uh, uh, with well, the turkey. This is all Peggy's fault. This was uh, shop, right? This wasn't... Um, no, no, that, no. This is no. where, where he takes home at. This is when... Oh, yeah. This is when Hank kind of freaks out at first. Like, what? What yeah. the fuck are you taking? Yeah, th- this, like, is, this is the first time when he comes to the... Isn't it 
Oh, no, no, no. Isn't it the first time when he goes in there, he's like, there better be a naked cheerleader mm-hmm. under your yeah. bed. Okay, yep. yeah, that's what that was. No, nah, because uh, the helmet teacher has it out for him. Yep. And she puts all these stains on there, and he's like, Dad, I'm going to fail whole mech. He's like, well, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Boys aren't meant to pass that fucking class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, but then he finds out, like, oh, he repaired his jeans. Cause well, I- because Peggy threw bleach, yes. ammonia, uh, like basic laundry detergent, and hot water on that fucking dress. Yeah, saying, oh, this is how you get rid of stains, Bobby. And then Hank's jeans, thanks is Thanksgiving jeans mm-hmm. were in the goddamn wash, and she fucked them up. <laughs> and then I love the Hank. He's like, I can't cut the turkey looking like this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you dumb bitch. <laughs> like, Hank, you have like 70 fucking pairs of jeans. I know yeah. you do. <laughs> you fucking, All the same color, same, same brand. Same wear. Yeah. And this isn't the same one. Because he worked uh, at Jeans West. Yep. And this isn't the same one where uh, Bobby learns how to cook better yeah, than Peggy is. too. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because uh, there's, there's, there's it starts off it starts off with Peggy uh, doing the uh, uh, cornucopia thing. Yeah. The centerpiece, and it's like a bunch of like bird, twigs, it's like bird's nest. It's like he's like, damn, uh, it's like fried cereal or whatever. Yeah. It's like, he's like, Peggy, that's got mites on it. That's fucking disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he like he bonds with Bobby over like equipment and stuff, yep. which is hilarious. Mm-hmm. He's like, well, I had the the. The later the uh, the teacher helped me with the jeans, and he's like, "Is that my sander?" And he's got like a little portable sander, mm-hmm. and he's sanding, and he's just like, "Huh, I can well, feel yeah. the fibers loosening." Yeah, hey Peggy, check this out. <laughs> yeah, and like the whole time she's just like getting angrier and angrier, mm-hmm. and she gets that fucking weird ass hairdo. Yes, because she starts seeing this, who this she is what, thinks is her gay barber. Yeah, and what what I love is he tells her to go sleep in Bobby's room. Because her hair is fucking has a smell to it. Yes, like, like yeah, she comes home. She's trying. She's like all over Hank, and he's just like, "I'm sorry, Peggy. It's like your your hair. It's like that new car smell." Yeah. And then later on, he's like, "I'm sorry, I lied. I like new car smell. That's just bad." Yeah. Well, he's like, "Hey, do you hear that?" He gets up in the middle of the night. He's like, "I thought I heard an upholstery cleaner." Yeah, and I was yeah. like, "Of course, you know the fucking noise of a person. <laughs> you fucking weird fuck." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like he hangs out, he hangs out in Hank's room. Yeah, and that's when you find out they they sleep on double beds. Yes, mm-hmm. which is kind of weird. But if they're... you don't know what that's for, yeah, yeah. But like, it's so fucking funny. <laughs> they <literally laughs> sleep on double beds. Just the, just the uh, old school Southern Christian thing. My grand my great grandparents slept on double beds because uh, my great grandpa still worked. My grand my grandma and grandpa did too. Yeah, because mm-hmm. he would get up and go to work and he didn't want to wake her up. Yep. Yeah, and it would keep the and plus also, hell, I'm I'm still not opposed to that today because I personally like a softer mattress. Yeah. And I know people prefer a firm mattress, yeah. but I like a mattress I can like sink into. So it's just like shit, yeah, I'll just do a double fucking bed. I'll keep my fucking cushy, soft ass mattress. You can sleep on a rock on the they, they 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 fucking uh, basically have a camp out in the fucking bedroom. Yeah. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah. She's like, What are you doing? He's like, Well, Bobby made some stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, it's better than that. Oh, bullshit. yeah, Jiffy yeah. Pop. Yeah, he's like, it's better than your bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> they got yeah, the Peggy was a steal in the fucking turkey, turkey and, and everything else. <sighs> and yeah. it, it came close to Hank saying, it's not your cooking, Pig. It's not the way you keep house. I love you, Pig. And uh, he's first saying, and I fuck you, you dumb bitch. I'm not, <laughs> that's my son, you dumb bitch. He's like, I don't just fuck you, Peggy. I make love to you. <laughs> like every fucking episode. In public. <laughs> I'm about to find fuck out up later. that hairdo, girl. <laughs> <laughs> and then you hear Dale and Boomhauer, and, and, and Boomhauer like, they go Hank, man. They go Hank fucks, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so again, just, that, that's, all, that, that's all I take away from this entire show, Hank fucks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's, it's, just, it's just hard for me to... I like this episode, but it just it reaffirms everything I don't like about Peggy, and especially because she tried stealing the turkey to take it to her hairdresser's house, who she thought was just going to be spending you know Thanksgiving alone. But come to find out, he was married to a woman with a fucking kid. Yeah, he was just rather eccentric. (laughs) You have a beautiful family. Yeah, Yeah. she's like starts sobbing and everything, and he's just like, uh, yeah. Hey, you need to go. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> There's just been several moments in this entire series where it's like Peggy is the crazy person and needs to be put away. This is one of them. <laughs> yeah. So after that was Dances with Dogs. Oh, Ladybird. Oh, Ladybird and and Puppy. 
Oh, doggy. Yeah, doggy. Oh, that's a uh, men, men and Connie's dog. Was yes, doggy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then yeah, they find out. Then they find out about uh, dog dancing on TV, or is it? No, some- no. Uh, Hank, uh, Hank and Peggy left. They get mm-hmm. ice cream because they don't like the store bought stuff. Yeah. And uh, and as soon as they leave, Bobby starts putting on some Hank Williams or whatever. Yep. And starts dancing with Lady Bird. And yeah. Hank comes home. He's like, none of that bullshit. <laughs> 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 and I love the reason for them having to come home early, because they, they leave and uh, oh, I forget where I think they. He's did like, see, no, honey, no, I think no they pig. Saw it, I, I saw him put his whole hand in the in the pink berry. Yeah, <laughs> and that just turned me off. <laughs> yeah, that was going. But then, like, if Hank freaks out at first because he's just like, you know, that's not good, you know, for Lady Bird, the side and the other. But much like Hank, he winds up <laughs> yeah, falling it. into it and doing it. Suckers into he just. Caves under and anything then gets, Bobby then does. Then he gets competitive with Bobby because he's using the neighbor's dog. Uh, yeah, which is fucking hilarious. He's and like, then of course, and Bobby's getting competitive. He's like, "We're gonna beat you, old man." <laughs> <laughs> and, and then Bill, of course, wanting to be part of things, tries getting gets a Rottweiler. Gets fucking swindled by the guys at the pet place <laughs> or, uh, at the uh, dog pound. Uh-huh. He's like, "Are Rottweilers good for dancing?" He's like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're great for fucking dancing. <laughs> yeah, man, they're he's great. got a fucking muzzle on, dude. It's like <laughs> that dog is meant to attack people who have, who co- go through a junkyard. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, I'll make you move. Yeah, yeah and we basically fill it. And he does that scream. <laughs> You'll be on your feet. I was gonna say, yeah, we basically just talk about Bill's entire B plot in one go. It's like because all it was is just constant cutaways to like him in the living room trying different ways to dance with this fucking dog. At first, he's like, okay, he's just. Slowly removes the muzzle and all of a sudden just yeah. attacks him and like a different <laughs> one. He's, and then later on, he's like, Well, maybe he didn't like that music. He like puts on a different song and then like leaves the muzzle on and like tries dancing with him and all that other shit. And he, he does that with people as we find out yeah. uh, later on, too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a little fucking weird. Yeah, Bill's monster. Yeah, but eventually leading up to a big old dance off and what uh, Bobby gets like, what third place. And Hank ends up winning? No, Hank doesn't place. Oh, okay. Yeah, because uh, Bill's dog gets loose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bill's he dog takes gets muzzle, loose. He has to take the muzzle off because they told him to. Yeah. And fucking dog freaks out. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, yeah, was... but, the, but the lead into that was <laughs> the dog trapped Bill in the uh, uh, bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bill knocking the sleeping pills off. And, and then it was just like, oh, he's sleeping. Wonder what he's dreaming about. And it like goes into his like mind and it's like him just ripping Bill to fucking shreds. Yeah, it is a killing machine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, so a rather bizarre one, but I, for some reason it still felt relevant at the time of watching it. I guess that's when dog shows and like dog like what centric TV things were popular, you can do maybe. Dog shows what and, uh, 2002, 2003. I think uh, the movie Was Best in Vick? Show was around this time. Uh, Michael, yeah, the Michael Vick thing with the pit bulls. I didn't really obviously uh, do more research. Damn, but yeah, that, that would probably would have been around the same time. Yeah, but yeah, the dog show thing was definitely a thing at that time period. My mom watched oh, yeah. all that shit too. I, and, uh, I worked with a guy who made who bred dogs and stuff, man. And probably a, a uh, and probably a, a follow up. A wild world, yeah. Probably a follow up to my other favorite episode in the season is uh, episode six, "The Sun Also Roses." Oh God, this is Michael Clark Duncan. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I read the synopsis of this, of, uh, this one. This isn't as memorable to this me the for rose, some rose, reason. Rose competition. Oh yeah, yep. mm-hmm. yeah. R.I.P. Michael Clark. But yeah, uh, but no, I love this one because the two fucking stoner dudes that get wrapped into it. Yeah, man. And- Wabi sabi, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lao Tzu lived in a tent <laughs> full of straw. <laughs> and ate rice. Yeah. Jeez, I love that shit. But I love, I love Michael Clark. Yeah, Duncan's intensity. Yes, you don't understand. You can't just come up. You can't just come into this fucking Lee like some. Pansy, or like some pansy ass kid. Nah, in here, feelings are hurt. Mm-hmm. Things are cut. You know, it's like, <laughs> whoa, bro. Whoa. And I love the way he talks like to other people. Yeah. He's like, he's got that rose. He's like, it's a like a St. Augustine mixed with a, with a, uh, something else. Yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. I call it a dainty best, my dear. Uh-huh. It's like, God damn, even the fairy shit sounds raw. Yeah. Like, <laughs> 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 is this another one where uh hank freaks out because bobby's into gardening at first well at first yeah at because first. um he misses something um he had to do 
It was like a football practice or something. Towel manager. Towel. Yeah. That, hey, Bobby, Dale Bobby was all upset about it. Bobby was the towel manager. And, and no he one, fucked it up. And no one was more upset than Dale, the yep. former towel manager. He's like, I don't know what, I, Hank, I don't know what I'm going to do when I see your boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, motherfucker, please. Bobby could kick your ass. <laughs> I, know, I just wanted to turn around. I just wanted like, Hank to turn around to Dale and be like, you're going to do nothing to my son. Yeah. <laughs> or no, he didn't have to say that. He's like, what did you say? Yeah. And like, geek. <laughs> and then he, then yep. he yeet himself off the fucking stairs. <laughs> but no, nah, he he, uh, he was gardening inside the um, closet because mm-hmm. he bought because he, he saw men play, fucking with the roses. Yep, and like men is fucking insane. She uses it as a cathartic thing. Yeah. she's like taking something beautiful and snipping it. Yeah, That's yeah, what she's it. like Morticia. She'll fucking take a rose and snip the head off. Yep, she's like I do this to keep myself calm. And it's just like. <laughs> Holy shit, bitch! Is your whole house filled with mental illness? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Con's manic depressive. Yeah. <laughs> she's psychotic. Connie's supposedly developing an, a mental illness. Yeah, and she's a genius. So yep. we'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> and it's always the fucking super intelligent ones that fuck it up for themselves. Yeah. <laughs> but no, she, he just gets really into it, and Hank being <laughs> Hank finding out that it's a competition kicks on the competitive competitive attitude and, yep, and he takes bobby, over. You too gotta, far. he takes it too far bobby you gotta win yeah mm-hmm. he's like dad what if we turn it just a little bit so it's kind of off center he's like nah Shh. Yep. the book says this way and then they get in the argument they put in a bong for fuck's sake and like, <laughs> <laughs> and like he knocks it over he's like bobby now i have to remove interior petals uh-huh. he's like uh, flower tweezers uh-huh. and like he has a toolbox yeah for it's roses. like a surgeon bit and he's just like shh of course, t- <laughs> of course the, he's gonna have a toolbox for roses and the thing was too is the judge went it's a perfect rose except for oh, that you removed interior petals yep <laughs> interior petals are missing I'm sorry immediately disqualified and it's oh just like, my dad told me it called me a failure uh, and he was right <laughs> <laughs> let's do fucking stoners oh god yeah so what about Wabi Sabi <laughs> Wabi Sabi I'm saying, I can't believe y'all remember the exact uh, rose setting. Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, because it's so, like, there's certain parts in the show when you, especially when you have special guests and they have, like, the weirdest fucking talking points. Yes. And I always remember that shit. Oh, yeah. And, and this is just a little preview, guys, because Cap's already wrapped up here. Uh, we're going to do a 1v1 trivia off for King of the Hill at some point, either at the end of this or somewhere in the middle to break it up again, like what we did our little special. Uh, few episodes ago yeah i'm all well, wrapped up and uh mm-hmm. i'm gonna challenge uh chris morrison just for funsies oh yeah that that'll be fun you do uh the uh, the was it uh rainbow two where he's all tied up at the fucking brother brushings and he has to call the backup he you can hear the like it's thundering and lightning outside and he grabs the mic <laughs> you can hear the bones creaking his fucking ass gap i'm coming for you <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. It's like the end of a trailer. Yeah, we'll do that. Cap. <laughs> I'm coming for you. Bro. We're gonna like cut promos and shit yeah. like that. Bum, ba, da, ba. <laughs> and Cap's over here like, can't see me. <laughs> uh, after that, we got Texas Skill Saw Massacre where Dale gets his damn finger cut off because he built a friendship tube between the houses. And yes. this has the most homosexual joke it's so fucking funny because all right so he builds a he builds a friendship tube between mm-hmm. the houses it cuts out the fucking subfloor of his house friendship yeah. tube already just sounds yeah. <laughs> and here's why it's funny because hey can now- i see my friendship tube gross oh that's <laughs> disgusting Ew. lewd uh, <laughs> but uh <clears throat> hank's house becomes condemned he can't live in it yeah so he has to stay with dale he comes back onto to the uh, to his house because he's fixing his own house. Because he didn't want to hire any help for he it. Want, mm-hmm. He didn't want to help because he, he can't hang some do it himself guy. Well, he's cutting with the skill saw, and the whole fucking time Dale was like, "You're cutting it wrong. You're cutting it wrong. You're on the wrong side of the line. Wrong side. Zip. Yep. And he cuts off his fucking finger. And he's like, uh. And then they go to the hospital. Yeah. Here's the problem. Like, he takes Dale to the hospital, and here comes Dale with his fingers sewed back on. Yeah. But it's wrapped up. He's in a wheelchair, and there's a little metal arm on the wheelchair with his cigarette. Yes. He's coming out of the fucking hospital. <laughs> and he's not freaking out about that. Well, uh, he's like, I want him arrested. He's like, Dale, it was an accident. No. 
you wanted to fill my friendship uh, friendship hole with concrete, so because no one you didn't want no one else to use it. <laughs> and it's like, and then it's the the two cops talking. He's like, and the two cops are writing this down. He's like, mm, it's always the pretty one. <laughs> and I'm just like, that is fucking hilarious. It's so I subtle that one because they thought they thought Hank and Dale were a gay couple. Oh my god! But he's like, you wanted to fill my friendship hole with fucking concrete, so no one else would get in there. <laughs> But I like this one because, <laughs> because this is one where I, uh, anger Hank has to, yeah, anger management, uh, and he has to want that winds up being one of your favorite outburst Hank moments. No, oh, yeah, because at that point, because everyone get, the fuck, get out of the goddamn hole, <laughs> because basically everyone around him is just using him like a doormat yeah. because you can't get Hank mad or, or like gonna, well, they also got that fucking tape measure. He's like ninety feet, Hank, ninety mm-hmm. feet, yeah. and he's just like, and he kicks the tape measure, and it goes. And it hits Bill in the fucking nuts. Yes. <laughs> he's like, he's out of control. <laughs> he's out of control. I gotta rewatch this. Now the that beast. I'm, oh, now that I've uh, the beast through with the series, I'm gonna have to make a list. Oh, of, like, the, once oh you remember who's, uh, who's in anger management with him? Um, is that, I, I see the dude's face, like the dude actor. Oh, actual oh, oh actor's there's, face. there's a guy who makes dollhouse furniture. Oh. <laughs> But uh, the whole thing was Hank. Hank was you know upset that he might die angry. Mm-hmm. But that guy died on his property. Remember? <laughs> yes. But at the end, Hank gets a, a certificate for passing anger management, so now he can get back on his property. But right after that, it was Chuck Mangione getting his <laughs> anger thing. He's like, Chick Mangione, I ain't no chick. Wham! <laughs> Hits that dude in the fucking face. Chuck Mangione still hangs around through the, like, the entire oh, yeah. series the, too. He, the, he shows up later on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's on the last Bob, the big, in my opinion, the better uh, Ender. Yeah, yeah. That moment's hilarious. He's too. a mainstay. And uh, but yeah, so basically, just, everyone's running all over Hank, but Hank knows that fucking hole's gonna collapse if that you fucking heard the gar- it, a garbage man said to him. Uh, it was something and very. The flippant. garbage truck was coming, and like they're under the fucking yeah, road. And Hank gets on the stop for a second. And he's like, "Man, look, man, my friends, they're they built a fucking hole." He's <gasps> oh like, shit! Yeah, I was like you, you two, man, drinking alone in the alley. Get it together. He's like, yeah. what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you fucking prick. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a good one. And then, uh, honestly, after this, there was a lot of controversy with this episode. Mm. Pig, uh, pig, pig, Malay. No, you skipped one. Did I? Oh, Full Metal Dust Jacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Mm. Uh, no, that was a funny one. Sorry. I, I didn't mean to skip that one. Yeah, after that, Full Metal oh, Dust yeah. Jacket. Uh, yeah, where Peggy Which, takes over the bookstore. And then turns it into a gun store, <laughs> right? It's a combination. Yeah. It's a combination. No, no. Buy a book and get a free gun. Fuck your Taco Bell KFC. Which, which <laughs> in a way, skirts gun laws perfectly. Right. Because in Georgia, you could go to, uh, there was a bank uh, that you could go to in Georgia. Uh, if you open an account, you got a free gun. Oh shit! Yeah, it was like a rifle, like a ten twenty two or something. Ah, damn, like, badass. Was it, how long? How long has that been? Or when did that uh, get eradicated? Sixties uh, like or seventies? No, 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 no. It was like two thousand four. I was wondering if it was that recent. Yeah, damn. Was like, yeah man, it was like it was still going after Columbine, baby. <laughs> Fuck. Shit. Like, Brady Bill's Dang. still going. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, go to the bank. Come on, man, get you a checking account. Only twenty five dollars. <laughs> Even sounded like a uh, Buck Strickland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, old top. <laughs> but yeah, this was a great one because uh, essentially that it falls right back into right it's into a Peggy Peggy's, Dale episode. It was Peggy's erratic behavior too that yep. buys the fucking bookstore. Yeah, she owns a bookstore that's like six thousand dollars a month. Yeah, yeah, so, and even Hank's like Peggy, like that, what? That's, that, that that's like like ten times our goddamn mortgage, you dumb bitch. Yeah, yeah. like <laughs> like how are you going to afford this? And then Dale, like. They never bring it back up again, mm-hmm. so I'm assuming they either bought themselves out or sold the building. Yeah, but damn, they they had it going there for a minute because at first it's I was like, gonna say I forget the wrap up. Uh, oh no, um, it, okay. So the whole point of buying the book club was to run a book club. Yeah, she gets kind of pedal like they read a book that's constant in the series called A Pedal for Onions mm. or some shit. Yeah, a field made of onions up. or some shit. And Hank legitimately read the fucking book. Yeah. Because he's going to a book club. Mm -hmm. Well, this place isn't really a book club. It's a place to bitch and moan and drink. And Peggy didn't read the book either. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they keep coming in and taking free books. Yeah. And uh, they shoot the books. Mm -hmm. And uh, one guy, one big biker looking motherfucker, he's like, hey, uh, 
do you have the second book? And she's like, oh, it's not as thick as the oh, other one. He's like, yeah. no, we... No, I really read it. It kind of made me sad. And they were reading like Little Women. <laughs> yeah. They were reading Little Women at the end because now it's a bunch of fucking gun dudes uh-huh. having a book club. I remember that now. Yep, I and remember. He's like, he's like, how is that a metaphor, Mad Dog? <laughs> Huh? <laughs> How is that a metaphor? It's real, and it's like, oh my god! Like they're having like a eccentric fucking talk about books <laughs> that they shoot. Because <laughs> what they'll do is they'll read the book and shoot the motherfucker. Yeah, it's like some fucked oh, up. God, like, yeah, I remember. Now. How is the lighthouse a metaphor for her life? <laughs> and it's just like, god damn it, Mad Dog. <laughs> Is this the one where uh, Peggy like? No, wait, no, there's another motorcycle episode in this mm-hmm. season. Never mind. We'll yeah, get to that with, one. Uh, fuck, I forget who it is. Uh, Jennifer Aniston yeah. and somebody well, else. Yeah, yeah, the anniversary one. I think yeah. it was. That's what I'm thinking. That's my about. old lady. <laughs> yep. But yeah, th- this episode though, I-, I don't know how to fucking pronounce the title. Pygmalion. Pygmalion. Yeah, this one wound up having a little bit of a uh, controversy. Yeah, because the guy dies in it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there-, there were some alternate cuts. So yeah, this was a- with Michael Keaton. Bad As guy. Trip L- Larson. Yeah, bad guy. Yeah. It's awesome. Oh, yeah. And she, I love the way where she goes to move in with the motherfucker. And she's like... Uh, well, because it starts out, Hank's trying to set her up with a date. Well, that, and none that, of it's going good. She winds this up... This is also uh, with a date, but it's also uh, Peggy's fault. Yeah. Because they go to the like the steakhouse, and she's having... Luann's struggling. Mm-hmm. And Peggy ends up getting her fired. Yep. And it's like, God damn, you bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then uh, so the the reason it wound up getting so like so, so, so here here was the big controversy in it. So it was a Halloween episode, of course, mm-hmm. and it, it was probably the most unsettling King of the Hill episode it is, yet because it it's very psychological. Yeah, it's a psychological horror, mm-hmm. and it's very it, it's like a Stephen King story almost. Yeah, it's yeah, per- it is for a King of the Hill narrative. Yeah, it's pretty intense. But I, I love it so much. It's fucking hilarious. Oh, it's great, and. Uh, the way I play of the dumbass is, is so good. Yeah, and she, and she gets like absolutely gaslit and you know mind mind brain her naivete shows. <laughs> oh god, big time! And 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 Hank is completely uh, <laughs> bewildered by it because the guy just keeps talking about meats. He's like, well, Hank, Hank loves it. Uh, Hank's, Hank's like, you know, uh, um, a man that knows his meats like that can't necessarily be that bad, Peggy. You know, yeah. but Peggy, it's one of the few times her bullshit radar was always going off. Well, he almost kills Hank. Yeah. In the hot air balloon. Uh huh. And he's like, he's, he's yanking on the court, talking to Peggy. Well, Peggy, mm-hmm. if you just chill the fuck out. And he starts, she starts <laughs> yanking at that court. And she's telling him the next, like, that night, he's like, he almost killed you. Oh, pig. Yeah. It's a hot air balloon. You don't know what's going to happen. Uh huh. Yeah, and then you hear a like, boom, and then they walk outside. There's a fucking headless pig on the fucking steps. Yeah, and it's like to Peggy, and like Hank's not freaked out at all. He's like, "Huh? Well, that's mighty nice of him." Even Dale and Boomer are like, yeah, "That's a nice pig, man. You gonna cook that yeah. up?" Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and, and and Peggy's like, "Do you not see this as a threat?" He goes, "No, this is it's like a, a couple hundred dollars worth of meat. This Peggy. is a gift, bitch." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's just kind of. Uh, you know, but make, for its dark tone and everything like that, it was actually removed from syndication mm-hmm. for years. This is one of the ones that they don't play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's where they, they kind of had like a super villain and something yeah, like basically. that, too. Yeah. Yeah. They really did. a rich did. villain. Yeah. And, and, and he. And he really just went psychotic in the end. And yeah. I forget what it was. It was it he gets never. Like, he gets intellectually shocked. Well, yeah, I, I was gonna say I know that, but I was gonna say it never aired. But the original version of that, they, it's been drawn, but it made the cutting room floor before it ever made TV. Oh, it shows him getting killed. Yes, they actually did animate it to where <laughs> it does like a quick scene of like uh, they've just they discussed it, whereas he turns around, screams, and you see it like POV style go straight toward it mm-hmm. and then like like the conveyor belt yeah yeah or appliances. like you would see the pov of it kind of heading toward you yeah and then it kind of cut away to be seeing like his feet being drug in see, with, thought, with like the chink chink like see, that. i thought that's what it implied when i watched it on a uh, hulu oh, oh it did but, i think so but all they all oh, they, they do the, they do the silhouette of the shadow yeah oh, okay because yeah. he gets shocked he's like what the huh. fuck am i wearing and he turns on tink 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 yeah and basically it it 
Yeah, you see the shadow come across his face of it raising up and him going, uh-oh, and then it immediately just cuts to Luann and Peggy, and that's all that happens. Originally, I was going to see the shadow, uh-oh, clip to the POV, one more scream, and yeah. then you see just like bloody feet being pulled We're going to kill down. this motherfucker, and you're going to watch. Yeah, so it would have been only like another two or three seconds of animation, but... I love, I love Hank, he's hanging out with the guy, and he's like, Hank, I want you to check out something, and it's like his big pig... Yeah, that's walking. He's like, that thing is like a record fucking like thing is fat as fuck. And like it falls over, and Hank's like, oh, it <laughs> fell over. <laughs> All the meat fell over. <laughs> yeah, so I really like that one. And uh, right after that was Megalodale, where Dale oh, is yeah. hired to exterminate Megalomart because uh, they're told where, it's a rat problem. Or this something. is where Hank. Uh, he recommends Dale. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the problem. Them. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem because he's not sure if he should recommend him and. What was it that was, uh, he thought it was a ferret at first, Mm -hmm. and then he released a cobra. Oh, no, a mongoose at some point. He released a cobra, and then he released a mongoose to kill the cobra. Yeah, okay, that's what it was. He's like, you did what? (laughs) And that's the only reason Hank gives a shit is because Hank's reputation is on the line now because it was his recommendation. That's why him, Bill, Bill, and Boomhauer all suit up. Yep. And then eventually Dale's just like, it's Chuck Mangione. He's living in here. And they're like, Dale, no, they, they have a rat problem. They have th- whatever it was. It's a small critter problem. We can fix this. It's not Chuck Mangione. Yeah. And uh, yeah. oh, yeah. And the uh, the two guest stars in this one, Topher Grace and um, I can't name Johnny, Danny Masterson. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so, Eric and Eric and Hyde. Hyde knew. <laughs> Before Hyde went nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Whoops. That's right. I forgot about that. Uh-huh. <laughs> but yeah, so. No, his brother and sister are so doing good. So, <laughs> so I, I dug this one and I thought it was cool because it was one of the few times Dale gets Dale gets his moment because he was right. Yeah. It actually was Chuck Mangione. Yeah, he had them all like there. tied up like yeah. a fucking yeah. Uh, yeah. what do you call it? Hostage. Yeah. And uh <laughs> well, what do you call it? Uh oh yeah, a hostage. Yeah. I lost <laughs> that's, that's what you call it. I'm, but like Mc, the whole time like I'm old. <laughs> he's like I love like Bill and Boomhauer joking. He's like, You thought it was old Chuck Mangione and then Chuck Mangione starts playing the music. Uh-huh. And it's like, What is that? What is that? He's like, Muzak. Just Muzak. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> He's that like, man, cool I gotta one. go to fucking what was it? 320 stores a year, man. I can't keep up with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the episode after that one, honestly, kind of forgettable for me. It's still a good one, but Boxing Luann. Oh, I love this one. This has got George Foreman. Yeah. And Frida Foreman. Mm-hmm. And George, too. <laughs> <laughs> All the Georges. Yeah, but this one's kind of weird anyway. I mean, yeah. almost like utterly forgettable, other uh, than it's Luann Boxing. Kind of like this is where, this is where we meet Strickland's brother, who's played by Bruce Dern. Yeah. Um, who comes in because he owes money. Mm-hmm. And they decide to do a half-ass uh, uh, Digstown situation. Yeah, yeah. Where um, we're gonna do a bunch of fake boxing, and then Luann gets her fucking hopes up. Yeah, and it's all because she's being kind of sexually harassed at college, mm-hmm. and like just she's playing no, she's fighting nobodies. Yeah, and and it's all set up anyway. Buck, Buck is building her up and then Buck has to explain to Hank hey man look these are all fucking laid back bitches like she can't fight Frida Foreman yeah she's gonna get her ass she's gonna get fucked up mm-hmm. uh, which I love <laughs> yeah, which I love cause it's all Peggy yeah still she's like Frida Foreman you ain't nothing if you don't fight my niece he's like I'm gonna fight her and then I'm gonna fight you old boy <laughs> old girl <Yeah. laughs> he's like old <laughs> I was just trash talking <laughs> it's like you stupid bitch she will fuck you up but, 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 but like those guys those same guys from the college show up mm-hmm. and she's like I'm not some fucking piece of meat basically he's like and they start rooting for her she's yeah. like cause they're like oh no it's, she's not just an object she's like fuck yeah she's, she went toe to toe with Frida Foreman one of yeah. the fucking female middleweights mm-hmm. that was a champion at that time okay. because because Muhammad Ali's daughter was fighting and okay. uh, Joe Frazier's daughter was so fighting. This is the next generation was yeah. just coming up. Yeah, but it was just like they, they had daughters that fought. Yeah. yeah. And she was proud of her. Hanky was proud of her. He's like, you went toe-to-toe with the real boxer. Yeah. Um, and you didn't win, but you were in the fucking ring, weren't you? Mm-hmm. Alex and I were talking about this not too long ago about how uh, in these later seasons they started giving uh, the characters kind of, you know, um, out yep. of sorts scenarios like Luann boxing, mm-hmm. things like that. Well, you got to mm-hmm. get, like, at this point, 
I see them giving the other characters more a little bit more depth, especially people like Luann. Yeah. Because they're going to build her up later on with Lucky. And uh, we need to know a little bit more probably about Beale and Boomhauer. Mm-hmm. We have we have some idea of what they're like. But we also get a lot more uh, development on other kids other than just yeah. Connie and uh, Joseph. Yeah. Yeah. And like it expands the universe just a little bit, yeah. which is nice. Uh, the, the problems are set for the time. Mm-hmm. It's but, no longer just some redneck hick family in the sticks. Yeah. Yeah. A million dollar baby was the thing at the time. Yeah. And so that's kind of one of those. Like you, know, you said, you've ever seen that movie. That's a fucking yeah. heart wrencher. It's a good one, but it's sad. And after that, we have Vision Quest, where John Redcorn is worried about how Dale is uh, raising his son, and uh, so he takes him on the Vision Quest, and Dale is the one that sees the Vision and well, believes is, he's now is, a Native American. Epi- yeah, this is one of the episodes where I really hate John Redcorn. Yeah. Because John Redcorn, keep him, like, let's, imagine if we had met this man, mm-hmm. and Dale was one of our friends. Yeah. We would fucking hate that guy. Oh, yeah. Because he yeah. fucked that dude's wife mm-hmm. for Granted, years she's a bitch too but he still fucked the dude's wife yeah and now he's coming to hank like hey he's becoming a certain age he's like well first of all motherfucker you're <laughs> not his you're his father yeah but you ain't his daddy uh-huh there's uh, this, this is a big difference in this one. now you could give some advice to dale hank could give some advice to dale because he's mm-hmm. not a great father really yeah but still, you need to back the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> but like the vision quest, I love the vision quest. It's, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, I had a vision that Joseph needs to kill the panda. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what the fuck is your problem, man? It's Dale. Yeah. He gets put away for a reason. I am the white buffalo. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's all I remember really from that episode. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it kind of went he has nowhere. A dream, he has a dream where uh, uh, Joseph is picked up by a bunch of other animals or some shit like mm-hmm. him. And uh, what's his name? Ends up having a vision quest. Bobby. Bobby has a vision quest where there's a giant panda. Yeah, on like the Tonight Show. <laughs> or no, <laughs> th- or no uh, Hollywood Squares. <laughs> he, he, that's his, that's his vision quest. He he's a, he, be, he thinks he's a giant panda. Why are they both pandas? <laughs> no, because they're going to a panda exhibit. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> in Texas. Yeah, so again, that one just kind of went nowhere. They tried sneaking in to kill the panda. Joseph is like, no, I can't do it. And they're like, you're right. Let's get the fuck out of here. And this is kind of how they ended. Yeah. Mm. Yep. After that, this is all one cap was talking about Queasy Rider. And yeah, it's the one where uh, to fix their uh, strained mare as they go uh, try out the biker life. They be- and but And they meet uh, real bikers. And they get- Sturgis. AKA Jamie Kennedy. Yeah, <laughs> as the uh, doctor, and then uh, Jennifer Aniston as uh, Pepperoni Sue. Yeah. Well, the whole thing is uh, Hank's riding in the back of the motorcycle well, the whole time, right? Yes, no, get, if, if, and on the way back. Because the whole point was, she's like, hey, I could drive. He's like, no, I, I think I can keep going. Mm-hmm. And they're going through, like, Wyoming, Nebraska. Like, they're going to Sturgis. Yeah. Dude, they're going through a lot of fucking states from Little Arlen. Um, and he tells her, he straight up tells her, he's like, well... I can't, Peg. He's like, she's like, why the fuck not? He's like, well, you know what they call that seat? What seat? The back seat. And she's like, you mean the back seat? He's like, no. And the bin, the what? Uh-huh. It's called the bitch seat. Yeah. You know. And you see, Peggy, it's called riding bitch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's like they get there. She has a scuffle with them. His glasses get knocked off, and they get ran over by a fucking little scooter and all that shit. Yeah, yeah by a little. By that little motorized yeah. cooler. <laughs> little motorized coolers. You ever seen those? Yeah. Yeah. Right coolers. It takes jabs at that whole biker culture, too. Yeah, it does. Um, but the whole thing was they were having trouble with their marriage mm-hmm. uh, because uh, Hank wanted to go see um, the Houston Texans yeah. training camp because Dallas was kind of shit then. Yeah. And he's like, I've got you. I decided to let you come. He's like, she's like, you, she says, you Oh, you decided, decided motherfucker. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Another decision without me telling, without me knowing. Okay. I bet you bought me a Jersey too. He's like, Oh uh, no. And he's like, <laughs> has a Jersey. <laughs> and it's like, Oh my God. It's all Dale's fault too, because he tells him about the fucking relationship. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's the side plot is that fucking treasure map. That psychiatrist draws. <gasps> oh my God. Yes. And Dale's just trying to, he's digging holes in his fucking yard and he finds a cat that he thought ran away. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and it's, it's dead in the fucking yard. <laughs> and he's like, he's stealing different ones from different people. He's like, jumps over the couch. Shisha, shisha. Yep. 
<laughs> but yeah, so I, I thought that was a good one. But then, like, it was one of the few times where you see Hank um, kind of drop it after a while because he has to ride bitch on the way back home. Yeah. But then he winds up enjoying it. Like, he embraces her. Like, he, he genuinely puts his arms around her waist and, you know, and hugs her, you know, as he's riding, you know. And, and, and she's like, oh, my God, look at the deer. He's like, I can't see. And she's like, I'll get you closer, you know, and little small stuff like that. So he, he saw that he could put himself back a little bit and still be okay yeah he had to uh his masculinity is so fragile that it has to get uh you know moved around sometimes didn't they get lost at some point no they don't get lost okay i thought they did at some point yeah they see she sees like hey hey look at that deer he's like i can't see and she fucking hauls off off road and goes off road so you can see it yeah, because he doesn't have his glasses on. Yeah. All right. Then after that, we had board games, and this is where Nancy, Peggy, and men run for the school board and basically just try out. Oh yeah, they all fuck each, each other. other. <laughs> easy, easy thing. Uh, let's nominate Peg. Let's nominate men. Let's nominate Nancy. It's all a fucking clusterfuck. Yeah. Everybody switched out voters uh-huh, and stuff like that. Stealing and, voters. And then in the end, the Christian lady wins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, someone we didn't even really it gets pay attention to in the entire it gets, time. It gets rid of sex in. <laughs> That's basically all that happens in that, yeah. in that it's episode. Yeah. It's a kind of a lackluster episode not much going on except for them bitching at each other with, with so many other good episodes we've talked about so far this probably is one of the lesser yeah. ones yeah trying trying to get more depth to uh nancy and uh men probably in this board we find out that uh no wait that's later on that uh men had an affair too maybe or peggy mm-hmm. or Pe- i think it's later on yeah there's one episode where peggy threatens um uh, Men. Men and Nancy. It's like, I have dirt on you and I have dirt on you. Yeah. She fucked somebody from Strickland Propane. Yeah. Sorry, I, I was just uh, looking at a weird little note on this. But yeah, the, uh, the next episode after that was An Officer and the Gentle Boy. Yep, this is where it goes to uh, Fort oh. Burke. Yep, goes uh, to military school. This is what yeah. we were talking about earlier. So... I found this interesting. It says, note, the sole episode of the series does not feature Johnny Hardwick. Hmm. Which was the voice of like Dale and all that. So I guess what it was saying is that he wound up not doing any voices in this episode. Hmm. I don't think I don't recall like Dale in that episode that much at all. So mm-hmm. he probably was just not in. Yeah, it. the sole. Yeah, the he probably sole doesn't do any other voices of the series because he does multiple know. voices. Yeah, he'll do uh, voices on an uh, in intercom in the school or something yeah. like that, or uh, Megalomart the, uh, yeah. announcement or, and things like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I read that right. The sole episode of the series to not feature Johnny Hardwick. So yeah, I guess that would just mean like the one episode in the whole series yeah. he didn't do anything on. Yeah. Huh. But yeah, he gets, they send they send Bobby to military school. Yep, it was the old cotton spot. Yeah, Fort Burke, man. He, and Hank could not get in. <laughs> yeah, and but Hank, but they allow they let him in. It's fucking yeah. hilarious. And then it winds up being you know uh, a, a regular school. a new age. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, a new age. Completely a new age. different from Cotton's experience. Mm, yeah, and Cotton was not happy about well, it. We'll see. Let's talk about that a second. I made me a combat bow. Oh what? <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So so we can kind of you know fill in the dots here you know it winds up not being what cotton thinks it is he comes in somehow takes fucking charge and somehow gets the dude fired and immediately gets himself hired let's yeah. not even think about that can i keep the chair yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then throws bobby in the hole and he comes out and the big sticker of it was uh when bobby's walking in with the kids they were like how'd you last so long he said i saw some very inspirational graffiti in there mm-hmm. and I, it said like cotton hill four days and then bobby hill seven days or something like yeah. that so with that in mind was it really as bad as cotton kept saying or was it maybe always like that i believe it was worse it had it had like you know it was worse back then but was but, it but though for, because he kept him, because he him, kept talking it up as it was going to be like you know he spent so much time in the hole and all that but bobby spent longer time in the hole than well, it's, he it's, did. It's, it's, it's a mental capacity thing right cotton said people went crazy in the hole of course people go crazy in the hole it's fucking isolationism you know it, it doesn't work yeah it makes you go crazy right he could only take four days of it mm-hmm. before cotton says i can't do it right Bobby's mentality, though, being an entertainer, being someone who could take something like that mm-hmm. and make it enjoyable, yeah, almost because he he doesn't need stuff. Mm-hmm. He's a comedian, you know. Yeah. He, he can he can make his own jokes. And, and plus, he, like he said, he was like, I hibernated, I slept. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. slept a lot, but like he could handle that. Yeah, if it was a little bit longer, maybe maybe he would have gone nuts. But that's it's just a different mentality of like. 
we can do stuff our parents can't do. Right. I, my, our parents can do stuff we can't do. I was know? thinking that too. It was like maybe yeah. it's generational thing. Yeah. It, or maybe that's it, what they were implying. It comes with age. Yeah. You know, because Cotton didn't have the same home, didn't have the same home life as fucking Bobby did. Mm-mm. He went to the fucking military at like 13. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a reason he went to the military at 13. Obviously, his home life was shit. Yeah. <laughs> it, just, it just made me think about it though, because uh, Cotton's been proven to be an unreliable narrator in the past. What's talking yeah. about like his war history and stuff. I think stuff, this part so. was probably true. Because okay. by the time he would have to go to like that school in like the 30s. So I imagine the 30s school was pretty hard knock. Yeah. Yeah. You're right on that one. <laughs> yep. And then we got the miseducation of Bobby Hill. Where he winds up working as Strickland Propane this is such a good episode. and learn some bullshit from Joe Jack. Yeah, <laughs> becomes good like the top salesman for the day. Yeah, for the like, month. It was a whole month of extra- grill extravaganza. Mm-hmm. And Hank gets sold to Thatherton for a day God. for 20 bucks. <laughs> Strickland is the biggest piece, piece of, of shit. shit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but Strickland sent me over here to give, uh, to bring you back over and give, uh, uh, Thatherton his twenty dollars. He's like twenty dollars. Hmm, that must be the first installment. And I know, and it's, and it's like, just like fucking <laughs> Hank, man. <sighs> Ouch. <laughs> get to see uh, Joe Jack kind of get more screen time. As yeah, these seasons yeah he's, progress. he uses magic. Yeah, mm-hmm. and Bobby uses lies. <laughs> 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 he, he, he he short talks mm-hmm. people, and and then the whole time Hank made one sale. but it was the big one. Yep, to save everyone's ass. Yep, and basically it just. It, in retrospect, with with what he described, he probably in real life money paid Strickland's bills for the rest of the quarter. Probably, yeah. With, with that uh, one and thing he signed up for, because it's, mm-hmm. it's a campground. Yeah, I've yeah. I've, I've long thought about what uh, Hank's salary is. Probably about forty five thousand. There was, there, was a, there was actually a YouTuber that broke that down. But for that time, probably about 32000 Yeah. And with Peggy just being a substitute teacher and... Whatever grift she's doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, say, or was it uh, real estate and not yeah. flipping any houses? Hank, yeah, but Hank's later, the breadwinner. By the time Bobby's out of high school, their house got paid off, so... Probably. They're probably making quite a bit of money because they were able to buy a motorcycle. He's able to do crafts, craft work. Yeah. Where, did those, where the fuck did he put those coffins? <laughs> Where I never the found fuck out does about he put that. half the shit he builds? He built an Alamo beer can out of metal. Yeah. You know what he did? He probably sold that motherfucker for a cool grand. <laughs> you know, they, everybody forgets that shit. It's like, oh, remember these nice ass things he makes? He sells them. Yeah. Because he fucking can. <laughs> yeah. Because he knows the seven practices of craftsmanship. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that silk? Yep. Yes. With felt inlay. <laughs> mm. Mm. You sewing? Like a pussy, <laughs> I am doing seven. One of the seven. I'm doing upholstery. Thank you. I will fucking put you in this coffin, motherfucker. <laughs> I'll kick your ass. <laughs> I'll kick your ass. Well, my favorite thing though is like, even though Dale was the first one to shoot off and be like, "Are you sewing?" and Hank was just like, "No." Is the and then boom, right back at him. He's like. So is that silk? Is that, is, that, is, that, is that felt with uh, with a silk in there? He's like, yes. <laughs> yes, it is. All right. After that, we have the good Buck. It's when Buck becomes a born-again Christian. Thanks uh, to the, Mary Lou Anne. Thanks yeah. to them Lou Anne's beautiful old titties. <laughs> Basically. Um, this, 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 this he saw the light of day. She does, a, she does a poolside Bible study. Yeah. Just in a bikini and shit. I love Gustavo. He's like, I got Jesus on my chest. And it's like, and but Joseph's like, that's not Jesus. That's Rob Zombie. He's like, shut up. <laughs> you got a tattoo of Rob Zombie on his chest. <laughs> yeah. So Even this, Lane Prattley gets in on that shit. Oh, God. Yeah. Th- this one was a weird one, though, because it's like, they even get, though it was funny, it had like a. It's weird. It had like a little bit of like that you yeah, feel get, to they it. They get engaged too, don't they? No, he tries to he tries to marry her. Yeah. Oh, oh, and she's like, oh, oh no, but you're, you're old. You're old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because Buck totally misread. He was thinking, ooh, yeah. daddy issues, girl. No. And it's well, just it's like, like, no. He, he, he also thought, like, oh, she, she's helped me. Maybe she can mm-hmm. love me. It was kind of like... That's uh, how that works. It was kind of like 60-40 on the Christianity and not being a piece of shit anymore thing. Yeah, well, he was changing around. He didn't drink it much, and, and business was going good. He was actually on the floor selling shit. Like, yeah. He was doing good. He was doing like he's supposed to. Yeah, Oh yeah, and the uh, the B plot on this one is uh, Bobby wanting to get away from a uh, running track, and he winds up hanging in out with restaurant. those old ladies uh, with the restaurant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> always like that one because Bobby just getting along with like the older community because he is just such a. Ham. Well, the whole time he's like Edith. Uh huh. 
Did you talk to the doctor about that thing I said? It's like, I oh my god! I love it. I just love eating it. desserts Bobby and shit like the that. Best. He is just Bobby the best. Is the best. <laughs> yeah, so that was a pretty good one, uh, but a little bit forgettable. I th- honestly, I kind of like the Bobby parts a little better. Yeah. Me too. And uh, after that was that I never promised you an organic garden. I love this episode. That was a good one. Yes, I love this episode because it's all about there's a there's a there's a garden on the side of the football field that's blocked, and it's. We had something like this in high school. Like mm-hmm. I took horticulture, animal science. All, I took all these vocational classes. Get and I really loved like shop the shop episode. Yeah, this episode, anything that involves like a school activity that they had a vocation. Mm-hmm. I fucking love these episodes because I'm like I've been in class with these dumb motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> so, like there was the goth girl who had to take the class because she needed a science course. It's like, <laughs> yeah, you, you know how hard horticulture really is, bitch. Like you know, you got, we have we had to do we had to do. A, a landscape draw we had to make a blueprint of a landscape oh wow and break out like fi- a file of how we're going to pay for it and how we're supposed to sustain it that was my horticulture one class and how old oh, were damn. you i was 15 jesus <laughs> it was beautiful right <laughs> wow yeah but yeah i drew i drew a fucking garden basically yeah like how do it, and how to sustain it how to and then Horticulture too. Mm-hmm. Oh, you need to plan out a basically a uh, four fields and how you're going to rotate them and mm. what you're going to grow. Uh, percentage of precipitation, irrigation. So uh, that's some shit. Pesticides I, and shit. I, that's some shit I actually worked on yeah. one summer. Yeah, like you have to learn about crop rotation and shit. Like yeah. some of these things are hard to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when I saw this, I'm just like. We had the greenhouse. We had all this. Sh- oh, we had yeah. special rules mm-hmm. tacked up on the fucking wall that we had to. Uh, we did organic stuff. We did the organic stuff like yeah. they do. Uh, we just did crops. Yeah, we did. Um, oh, what are those fucking flat? Uh, fucking four years of vocation. I can't remember the goddamn name of it. <laughs> uh, those flowers, poinsettias. Oh uh, yeah, Christmas. Yeah, we grew those. Oh okay, those are actually poisonous, aren't they? Yeah. But they're, they're, be- they're, they're like felt leaves on those. Mm-hmm. And we sold them. Yeah. Our whole school made money constantly. Yeah. I built deer stands in one year. Like, <laughs> oh, wow. For like 75 bucks a pop with Damn. ladders and like two people could sit in it. Oh, shit, yeah. Out Fuck of yeah. steel. Yeah, out of steel. Out of motherfucking metal. Oh, I was saying that was a steel. <laughs> yeah. But like we, I sold one to my cousin. My, everyone sold at least two. Yeah. And that's 70 bucks times 30 kids mm-hmm. times two. So that's how much money we made for our one class. So like... The whole point of having vocational classes was to make money for the school. Yeah. And I just love it that we made more money that one year in vocational classes than the fucking football program. Because our football team sucks. <laughs> but, no, nah, I mean, I just think, like, that whole mentality of, you know, oh, we're going to keep the school up. We're going to do this. Mm-hmm. We're going to do that. And then the whole part of this But then story, Peggy fucks it up. Yeah, Peggy fucks it because she puts pesticides in. Yeah. yeah. And she makes a well, beautiful... Well, because she thinks you, get, you can't keep the organic garden good. Yeah, because they're, like, the techniques are hard. Yeah. If you want something nice, you got to work hard for it. That's mm-hmm. the whole point of life. And she's a dumb bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you know, use coffee grounds to keep away slugs. Use your fucking hands and flick some fucking bugs off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pour some beer to keep away other fucking... Like, just simple tricks. Mm-hmm. And Hank's out there. He's showing them. He's like, yeah, we can do this. Yeah. he's a competitive man and he takes pride in everything mm-hmm. he does which, and plus he looks at it he's like this is food he like, he's yeah. like and he cares and, about and the, the football food, team and the food's being ate by the fucking football team uh, and yep. that's why he also cares he's like oh this is good food they need to eat good let's make and, sure they do this and it's a project mm-hmm. yeah and bobby when they bring up all that fruit and uh, vegetables and stuff holy shit it's like a big bounty he's like yeah. and even the coach is like good job Hill. and bobby's bobby's prideful of it mm-hmm. and hank's Hell yeah. Yeah. My boy's keeping this motherfucker alive. Yeah. And Joseph. <laughs> yeah. And Joseph. Our and Joseph. native son. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And after that, uh, we had two true uh too true to be your fool. <laughs> to or, be true to your fool. Yeah, be true to your fool. I can't fucking read today, Jesus. Yeah, it's where uh, Bill accidentally infects Hank and Dale with the uh, the head. This is the backstory. Yes, this is the backstory that Hank's got a giant tattoo on the back of his skull. It says Bill. Bill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they go into a. I love it. They're in a honky tonk bar that's right beside a punk bar. Yes. yes. And, they, and Hank just wanders over. He's, he's like, got to the, know where to hold. Him. Oh yeah, he's. Oh, 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 He's even yelling at the band going like, play the gambler. <laughs> and the punk rockers are like, man, 
fuck you. And they, that one dude throws a punch, uh, and Bill just being fucking the uh, Bill just dozer. Capture it. Yep. Out, of, out of boot camp. Even stronger than he was as the Bill dozer. Uh-huh. Catches that fist. He's like, come on, brothers. I th- I think we're had a uh, what was it? What do you say? I think we had a misunderstanding, friend. Uh-huh. And he like twists that fucking fist. Is like, oh hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's holding like four guys, and like he's telling Dale, he's like, hey, get, get Hank out of here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. And I'm just like, oh man, this. Yeah, Bill in his prime, man. Then he would have been the alpha. If Hank, it wasn't Hank's, for the for the placebo. <laughs> yeah, <damn> placebo. <laughs> but yeah, then I'm Hank Richard stumbling Wallace. on across a little later, he's like tattoo, and Bill uh, Bowmhauer is just like, oh no 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 no. <laughs> and he's like, this right there across my chest, big old letters, B I L L Bill. He's like, this man paid for a tattoo. I know, it's, that's the thing. That, that one that's thing bugged me. Fuck. I was going to say, that that is so incorrect, too. And yeah. that's the one thing about me. You watch like those little episodes, shop things. I watch tattoo-centric things, and I go, that's bullshit. Because if you're drunk, you can't get a tattoo. You yep. can't get a tattoo if you're drunk. And, and you shouldn't get a tattoo when you're drunk, because you'll bleed all over the fucking place. Yes, exactly. your blood is thin. It's the worst you idea. Mm-hmm. You remember that? When oh, we get, I know. When I we know. get drunk and shoot guns and get tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny fucking paycheck or some yeah. shit. <laughs> Johnny bitch. <laughs> and it's just... <laughs> yeah, so that was the one reason I'm just like, this is such bullshit. They, he might keep your fucking money, but he's not yeah. gonna, you know, walk, keep but it's making Texas in the 70s, so. yeah, <laughs> or so. the early 80s, whatever. Yeah, but yeah. So I thought that was a funny one, and then uh, Bill finds this place in prison, uh, like yeah. among the crazies. He, 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 gets, he gets, less, uh, gets arrested for uh, petty crimes. Yep, and has to do like. Feeding the uh, mailbox some beer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's basically doing some because he finds out uh, uh, Hank got it lasered off or whatever, yeah. or oh Hank regretted it or something yeah. like that. And that that he was oh. No, of course, Bill's got a small take. little thing to send Bill Which over I don't the fucking understand. edge. Like I understand Hank getting drunk and getting a tattoo, but forgetting his head was shaved, right, and not feeling a horrible pain like a sunburn in the yeah. back of your fucking skull because you know you, you've got some tattoos that it really does feel like the next day you got a fucking sunburn yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what it feels like that's what a tattoo feels like after you get it it feels like a like a light sunburn mm-hmm. and Hank just didn't notice it yeah mm. <laughs> she must have been on a bender. I forgot about that. My judge never got a tattoo, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And, but I do like the wrap up uh, or, I, I love Hank trying to get arrested yeah, he walks into the convenience store, takes off the shirt in front of the cops, and they're just kind of like looking at him, slurping on their drink. And no he's shirt, like, no service. Uh, he's like, oh, "That's more of a store policy. It's up to yeah. him." And the guy just looks at him. He goes, eh, "That's my boss's policy. I really don't care, dude. You do you." <laughs> <laughs> but then, and like all this other stuff, like jaywalking, all yeah. that. But getting in his car, doing that slow tap, that slow creak up right next to that cop's car, barely taps it. All of a sudden, next to him, getting slammed up against the fucking wall. You scrap my bumper skate sticker, you son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, the, the guy, the, was a cop had like a his kids like terrific kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You scratch my kids bumper sticker, you, you piece son- of shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck, you about to get a fucking beat. That's Arlen right. cops keep it real. Right? Yeah. That's that's Hank going hardcore, just tapping on a fucking cop car. Yeah, <laughs> but, but I like how he, he gets his uh, cellmate to give him the tattoo again. He's like, oh, and then shows it to Bill, and he's like, oh, it looks great. I like the little smiley face above the eye. He like looks over at the guy, and he's like, <laughs> just gives him a thumbs up, like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and, and also, I would have loved a cutaway of like when Hank came back home, being in jail all day. <sighs> oh, Peggy, and he's like, Peggy, I was in the cans. <laughs> She's like, yeah. He's like, let's go to the bedroom. <laughs> I've been Hank. going a whole fucking day. I've been gone a whole night. <laughs> okay, we're going to get naughty. Yeah. But but is it, well, with all of Bill's faults and how annoying he can be, there is a certain amount of endearingness to him because like well, that, when he that, got released, well like it's well, it's like he got released and immediately they're like, you can go home. He's like, no no, I'm waiting for a friend. Yeah. And he just sits right back down. And it's just like that's that's kind of sweet, but. He could take it way too fucking far. Yeah. yeah. He can because, well, you got to remember, it's like watching like uh, like a wrestler decline. You know, this guy was... Oh, like, God. He is like the movie The Wrestler. But, uh, he's, yeah. like any, he's like any wrestler almost. He's like, he was the upper echelon. Yeah, you're the top guy. You're, yeah, you're it's fucking, like Jake the Snake Roberts You're the bulldozer. Like you know, you are the big fish in your small town. And he, went, he got knocked down to being the smallest and... That I imagine that psychologically is fucking terrifying. Oh god, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, one, one of the uh, one of the ones I liked after it because uh, I liked uh, his show that was also on Fox. Uh, this episode, Racist Dog, featuring Bernie Mac. I share a birthday with him. You what? I share a birthday with Bernie Mac. No hey, shit. Used to. Used to. And <laughs> and Rodney Dangerfield. Oh no shit. Damn. But no, I, I loved the Bernie Mac show. Your dog is racist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lady Bird's just barking at him. Mm-hmm. Bites him. Bites his leg. Oh, yeah. That's bites right. his pants, remember? Mm-hmm. And he, doesn't hate, he doesn't hate Bernie Mac because he's black. He hates him because he's a repairman. Yeah. yeah. And Hank feels threatened by him. Well, Hank gets called a racist by everyone. Yeah. Yep. It's just like, even I don't Dale. hate black people. I just hate repairmen. <laughs> yeah, even Dale calls him racist. And Hank's just like, I want to kick this little motherfucker's ass. Uh-huh. No, because Hank's got to fix him himself. He doesn't need a fucking repairman. I'm going to roll you like I roll these credits, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but God, I, I kind of side note on that. Do y'all, did y'all watch the Bernie Mac show? I did. I watched, I've only watched maybe a couple episodes. And the whole The whole show is based off. Uh, him raising his sister's kids. Yeah. Which is a real, a real life thing. Mm-hmm. He, and, he raised his sister's kids for a while. Yeah. And, and that's why the show was really good and kind of had that genuineness to it because mm-hmm. you could see the look on his face on Sunday. And you know what? Man, I actually want to go back and rewatch that show because... It's on Netflix. Is it? Okay, cool. Because there's little moments I'm seeing in my head. I feel like that was the black live action King of the Hill. Could have been. Yeah, because there was because you had because well, well, he has a cut he has those cutaways where he's talking uh-huh. to the audience. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, yeah, you you could argue that it's uh, that boy ain't it's right like a black kind of scenario almost. Yeah, yeah, maybe a, a family so. dynamic. Version. Yeah, yeah, you're because right. Because you ever watched the Kings of Comedy with Bernie Mac? Oh yeah, yeah. that's right. Uh, that's what I loved. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but well, that was filmed in Charlotte. That's right. No shit. It was filmed at the Bojangles Coliseum. Oh shit! I forgot about the. You're right. You're right. Oh, but, uh, that was like 2002. Two thousand two. Yeah, like that. a long time ago. But the, his whole his whole skit, his whole uh, performance was about raising them motherfucking kids. Mm-hmm. He's like, now Charlotte. He's talking to Charlotte as a tale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he he, but he's like, this little girl came down my stairs and looked me up and down like I was in her fucking house. <laughs> so I was just like, yes, that's so fucking good. But like, he was so funny and like, mm-hmm. you know, rest in peace. Right. But you know, he was a solid funny man. He oh, was in the movie called Mr. 3000. Did you ever watch that? I did. I remember that's that That's a one. fucking funny movie. Mm-hmm. He played baseball. I never watched that one. Oh, it's funny. But yeah, so good episode. And like I said, I remember, I remember when this episode was new because again, watching the Bernie Mac show and then seeing the crossover thing. And yeah. I think that was one of the first times I became really aware of network crossovers. Yeah. Because this season had that '70s show crossovers and Bernie Mac crossovers, and both of them. Brian had- Cranston shows up in the episode. Yes, he did, and they were doing Malcolm, Malcolm at the Middle at the time. Yeah, so uh, there was a lot of people kind of hopping over and doing guest voices on the show. Huh. You, know that, you know that dude doesn't remember none of that shit. That is so, oh, Frankie Muniz. Yeah, yeah that is he doesn't so sad. None of that shit. Did really? you know that? Yeah, he, no. got, he, he uh, had an accident or something. Mm, forgot he, like half his life. No, oh, he, wow. he had an accident shortly after the whole uh, Agent Cody Banks movie. He so did that long ago. Yeah, yeah it Holy was. Shit. It was like shortly after Malcolm in the Middle wrapped up, and he did like a few like Hollywood movies. Mm-hmm. And shortly after that, like like Chris said, got in a real bad car wreck and like fucked his brain up like to the point where Brian Cranston like he he was like a real MVP in the thing. Like he showed up like weekly to like see him. And oh, he, he said he like uh, the other boy, the other Masterson, mm-hmm. Danny Masterson's yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah. The older brother, mm-hmm. but he said like Brian Cranston said like working on that show, he treated those kids like they were his kids. Yeah, and he was very upset when he heard about that. Mm-hmm. It happened yeah. to a guy I went to school with. He got in a terrible car accident. He oh, doesn't yeah? remember shit, dude. I felt bad for him. He didn't yeah. remember his parents. He didn't remember the people he graduated with because he graduated before me. Yeah, I was like, hey man, how you doing, man? How you He's like, uh, did you go to West Iron? I was like, yeah. He's like, I don't remember any of that. And I talked to some buddies of mine. They're like, "Hey, man, yeah, he's he's done. Wow, he but worked yeah, like he could work whew. and stuff. But like, like Frankie Muniz is back to work. He does like producing and stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but all that basically everything aside from like he said his like early childhood and teens. Outside of that, he does not remember. But basically, like all of the Malcolm in the Middle stuff and Agent Cody Banks and any of the Hollywood stuff he did, he said tiny blips like here and there. But like 
he genuinely does not remember making Malcolm in the Middle. He remembers vaguely faces and kind of being around it, but he said he did not remember the show at all. That's crazy. Like, I love you, that show. It was, was so, so fucking good. good. That's just got to be like a shame. Like you were the lead in a yeah. successful you were a star TV show America for yeah. like a while. And uh, you for a good like two or three years. That was a hot show. Yeah, my dog Skip. Yeah, <laughs> Skip dead. <laughs> <laughs> On down to the last couple episodes. Here we got three more. We got. Night and the Deity. This is the Dale Grove episode. Yes. This is where he meets uh, Janine Garofalo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is this the female exterminator that kind of like, I'll give you five bucks if you can tell me your name. Mm. Not you. <laughs> Shit. Uh, I'm probably not going to get it. I have a dollar. <laughs> you know how I am with the dollar bit. Is it Darlene? Nope. Mm. Can we give them the uh, initials? SR. Shelby Ray? I don't know. Shelly Ripken. Shelly Ripken. Ooh. I think I deserve that dollar. I that's guess. incorrect. Shit, that's Shelly Ripken. Uh-uh. What is it? Sheila oh. Ripken. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see? But that, that would have been an air. If he had said that, I would have gave him $5. <laughs> <laughs> but see, that would have been an ant eh on fucking King of the Hill trivia. <laughs> Y'all better be coming ready. I was going to say, we both would be terrible at it, apparently. <laughs> oh, I know, right? Oh, this is going to be fun. But no, I love that one. And again, the fav- my favorite one is the her talking about the mating call thing with the... <laughs> <laughs> the roaches then, yes and then like after he like rejects her and like a total cool fashion because he's like i love my wife you know all this other stuff she like walks away and he's like got his back turned he's like you know i think you should go now you know like total like pimp moment just being like i think you should go <laughs> kind of thing he just turns his back you know and just lights a cigarette a real dove starts cooing in the background he's like turns around he's like jesus woman can't you take a hint well, a, and then na- sees the bird he goes you heard me. I love my wife. <laughs> even, uh, even Nancy gets jealous. Yeah, oh, I know. Because it's, she's like, she's on like, paper, it's Dale's dream girl. Or, yeah. you know, to us, it would seem that way. Yeah, yeah. it is. It is his dream girl. And, and he's like, she's, semi- she's making fun of her because he's like, oh, can you go pick up the, you know, this caulking spray or whatever? And like, Nancy doesn't know what it is. And he's like, ha! She yeah. doesn't even know what the yada yada was. And it's like, She's not supposed to, man. She's a meteorologist. But anyway, she goes goes with him on his on his job, and he's he's blowing this up gophers. What you do? He's blowing up gophers in a fucking baseball field. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> boom, boom. He's throwing pipe bombs and all. And she's just freaking out. This is what you do. I know. I love it. <laughs> Some Caddy <laughs> Shack. I was about to say it's Bill Murray. Yeah. <laughs> but but I, I love. I like how Dale came home. He was just like, "You won't yeah, believe this I'm girl." Home. He's like, "Yeah, I'm home early. Yeah, we we saw some crazy stuff. Would you believe Sheila was coming on to me? Can you believe that?" <laughs> and she's like, "No." That's that's when I would have loved like a full one eighty turn on Dale. He's like. Did you know I would have left you and John Redcorn's son? Oh! <laughs> he just like take his glasses off and look at her, like with his beady little eyes. <laughs> Oh, I've known this whole time. Tell me, tell me, like Dale in a wife beater with no glasses and no hat, just looks like a Klansman. Oh, no, he's scary. Robes. Oh, they, they've animated that, and it looks scary as fuck. He looks like a Texas racist. <laughs> After that, we got Made in Arlen, and that's oh. when Khan's monitor, Leoma, Leoma. <laughs> comes to town, and Bill falls in oh, love. Oh, yeah. And they got to throw this away. I didn't like it. Like, they should have kept too. her. Me, they, too. They honest... The reason I didn't like it is they had a genuine good connection because Leoma saw Bill's faults immediately. She saw how sloven he was. Yeah. She saw all the bad sides of him. Yet she still saw a good in him, but she also saw a. She's a, from the old school a mm-hmm. little bit, a working man without a woman. Yeah, and she held that in high regard, not his like his sloppiness, but she basically saw, oh, you need someone to clean up around the house because you don't have a woman of your own. Yeah, and he pays her, mm-hmm. and then he pays her with sex. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate reward. Yeah. This is the only uh, woman in. 
the entire series that kind of you know sticks around with Bill for a minute, right? Yeah, other loves than, uh, other Bill. than uh, other than uh, the Texas governor. Yep, <laughs> and Richards, and, and Richards, Richards. Yeah. and Richards had a thing for Bill Dotrie. Those might be the I only two, right? My favorite, my favorite yeah. part of the rest of this episode is just Colin going, oh, <laughs> I know, <laughs> and having to accept. It. I would love to have that just as a ring toll from work. It's like. <laughs> Hey, what is that? <laughs> it's like, oh, fuck. Sad con. <laughs> Sad con is best con. <laughs> oh, my heart. What, what about manic con? Manic con's scary con. Yes. <laughs> We're going to put robot arms in the grill. Huh? Yes. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> With power of Hank, I'm in. <laughs> and you know what? I think we may have underestimated this uh, season. This was, a, I think, this was a good season because it even ends with the witches of East Arland. Oh, it's uh, what's his name from uh, Bob and Show? Uh, David wait, Cross. David, David Cross. Cross. That's right, dude. That dude is hilarious. Yeah, you remember his name in the show? Is uh, his character name? Or should I save save this? Mm, hold Cap, on. don't you dare look it up, you motherfucker! I see what you're doing. Mm. Put your phone away. <laughs> you cheating motherfucker! I was, look, I, was up, I was just looking at the B plot. Uh, sure you were. <laughs> <laughs> you cheating bastard! It's not Artemis. It's Mm-mm. close to that. It's like a stupid fucking name. It is. It is. But they say it only a few times. Yeah, because he's got another name. Uh huh. Uh, fuck. I don't know. Not off the top of my head. Cap, you got it. Uh. Sh- I don't know, David. <laughs> Ward. Yeah, Ward. <laughs> Ward. But his magic his name. First name. His magic name. Oh, God. Yeah, I wish I could remember. I'll save that one for trivia. Yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. I'll save it. What'd they have to drink? Uh, Pig's blood? Dog blood. Well, they... Oh, yeah. they. I, I remember now, they had to get uh, dog's blood. I thought they couldn't get it, but no, they could get it because one of the guy's moms worked for a vet or some shit, which yeah. also, think about that. How did he obtain that? Either A, the vet just has dog blood laying around, and that's fucking weird. No, it's for blood transfusion for a dog. Yeah. If you're a vet. Yeah, I guess he wouldn't have that. Yeah. I love the fact that he goes to Ward's house, and looks. Hank goes to Ward's house looking for his son, and the mom's like, sh- sh- he ain't here. Mm-hmm. But I am. And it's just like, uh, oh, shit. Hey, you could throw it to some strange. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know why? Hank, Hank fucks. fucks. <laughs> no, Hank, Hank's normally the victim in those scenarios. Yeah, yeah he is the victim. The he lady sexually cop. harassed. Like, yeah, the lady cop, cop too. Like the cop. <laughs> Cops can do no wrong. <laughs> no, no, I, I love how uh, he tries to get Bobby into, like, playing cards. But Bobby gets into tarot cards <laughs> of course bobby buy? does remember they went to like a there was like a thrift thing mm-hmm. what did hank buy a large uh like bulk tube socks mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he had to go to his tube sock guy and he was worried that he was trying to get bobby out the door because uh he's like if and now if the tube guy there. brings us a dog he's gonna want to leave early because the dog's gonna get hot yeah. and i remember he was like trying to talk to bobby and giving him like five bucks being like buy something and he's like with fanning like, the dog yeah and he's like it's yeah. not even that hot <laughs> <laughs> No, it's such like little stuff like that that goes a long yes. way. Oh, and the same thing. Oh, talking about the little shit. Uh, the small joke of uh, when they're all sitting at the Whataburger and uh, someone does like the fucking fire magic thing where he like opens his hand and a little fireball shoots out, and you hear someone like off in the distance go, "What have I told you boys about doing that in here?" <laughs> and he's like, "Bertram." <laughs> oh yeah. No. We don't do that in front of the regulars. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh god. But yeah, honestly, uh, oh, if you noticed, did you notice that one guy kind of looked like Boomhauer like a a little bit. There was like a Boomhauer bastard running around. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, that's not the only time we see uh, the the old. Um, um, oh yeah, when they go to snipe hunting. Yeah, when they go camping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In the first, Woo, that's, like the, that's like the first season, right? Yeah. yeah. First, second season. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking funny. A lot, a lot of Boomhauer bastards running around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't be surprised. There has to be. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, for seventh season, I still think this was still. Oh, but pretty back, up back to the episode real quick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it when Bobby finally realizes he's like. You guys are fucking retarded. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'm sorry, but I'm, this is too much for me, y'all. It's like, I want nothing to do with what y'all are doing right He's now. Like, Fine. You must see, you must uh, taste my magical powers. It's like, wing, 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 wing. Uh-huh. He's like, oh, you guys are fucking losers. <laughs> Basically. And then he's like, Hank, look at, uh, he finds those jocks first. He's like, yeah, we saw him about casting my foot into his ass. <laughs> <laughs> and Hank's just like, ah, oh, shit. Oh, he's a nerd. That's, that's so 
asinine. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, Bobby, did you drink dog blood? No. No, no. no I'm not that crazy, Dad. <laughs> But yeah, seventh season, I still think they were on their stride on this one. There there were some really solid episodes, especially in retrospect, watching the later seasons. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. This this one still feels like the original, you know, kind of dynamic that it came with. Yeah, maybe a little bit more slapsticky, maybe a little bit more absurd, but mm-hmm. not too far out there yet. The characters are still written within character, it feels yeah. like. There's still a lot of like uh, tropes from the earlier seasons that they mm-hmm. keep going like Bobby reads a tarot reading for Bill. Yes. And it's just like, oh, you'll get great riches. And he's like looking at the guy. And he's like, and Bill's like, oh, awesome. And he's like, oh, wait, it's upside down. You're going to get poor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bill's just the punching bag. and yeah, Always. Well, on to season eight, but on next time on Couch Potatoes. But I've been Alex. I've been Cap. And Chris, do you have a final thought for us on this episode? Hank, folks. <laughs>